Welcome, everybody. It's Georgia from Cybercrime Magazine, and I'm here today with G. Rittenhouse, the vice president at Cisco, uh, February 1st, and we are at NYIT today, and we just want to say thanks very much to NYIT for letting us be here again. So, G., just um, to get started here, give me a little bit of background about yourself and how you got involved in the technology space. Well, it's appropriate that uh, we're meeting at New York Institute of Technology because my entire background has been in tech. So from very young age, I was an experimenter and kind of fooling around with tech. Uh, graduated uh, here on the East Coast in technology and spent my entire career in tech. Uh, I was president of Bell Labs, joined Cisco five years ago to help run the cloud effort. Uh, ended up in security because, of course, cloud and security go hand in hand. So throughout the, throughout the years, I've been uh, heavily, heavily immersed in technology. Well, it's awesome to talk to you today and to meet someone of your caliber and experience and everything. Oh, like it's that. my pleasure. Um, and we're super excited to be working with Cisco more in 2019. So what are some of the cybersecurity initiatives that you're working on at Cisco right now? So Cisco has a fairly broad portfolio. We take a very comprehensive view of the security industry to protect our customers. So we have everything from email to firewalls, endpoints to cloud. It gives us a very unique view because that diversity of inputs allows us to really be able to distinguish the abnormal from the normal. And so uh, a lot of the initiatives for us is to take all of that information and provide a coherent security posture for our customers, as well as trying to consolidate and build a platform to simplify security for our customers and build it into their initiatives. So um, with, with your background in security and technology, especially the cloud, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you would advise other C-suite executives about cybersecurity and cloud security today? Well, I think the biggest is a lot of CIOs and CISOs view the cloud as um, something new. They have a data center. They know how it operates. They protected it with firewalls and whatnot. And the cloud is something new and shiny and, and safe. And so as, uh, as CISOs move these applications into the cloud, sometimes you can... Um, forget that you actually still have to apply best practices in mm -hmm. security, being able to uh, have visibility into the applications there. And so this is one of the keys that you, you can't take your eye off the ball as you migrate and expand into the cloud. So tell me a little bit more about the security portfolio at Cisco and how it relates to cybersecurity. Well, we, uh, again, have a very broad portfolio. Uh, we see that as our customers migrate into cloud, for example, you have users and devices on one side, applications on the other side, and it's a very dynamic system. Here we are today, uh, but I can still access my business critical applications from this location, from my device. That presents- it's very a, convenient. It's convenient, but from a security perspective, uh, it adds a level of complexity because mm -hmm. I don't have a well-defined perimeter right. anymore in the enterprise. So that pushes the security enforcement to the edges, to the endpoint, and to the application. So we've and the data is spreading as well. Exactly right. And so we've we've broadened the security uh, portfolio years ago, and we still have firewalls and proxies, but to be a modern security company, we also have to expand into the cloud and onto the endpoint in a, in a much more coherent way than just an individual, let's say, point product would offer. So how much of the security is automated versus how much does, do, does someone need to be there keeping an eye on it 24-7? So a lot of the back-end event processing is automated. We deal with hundreds of billions of emails and DNS queries and all that. So there's a massive amount of data in the back-end, obviously much more than any group of humans could manually calculate. So there's a lot of machine learning uh, and then filtering all of that data and classifying all of that data. But then there's also on the, on the threat side, as you're looking for zero days and, and doing the research, that's a very human 
piece as we hunt and, and, and look for those kind of threats. So let me just switch gears and talk a little bit about um, education and Cisco as a company. I know Cisco is very involved with education, and I wanted to hear a little bit about that because it's a such, such an important aspect of technology these days. Well, education is huge in Cisco. We've had uh, the Cisco University for decades, and, and thousands and thousands of individuals have gone through it. I, it's amazing uh, whenever I talk to CXOs and CISOs, uh, so many of them say, I'm a CCIE or I, you know, I'm uh, uh, Cisco educated. So we've taken this to heart. It's always been one of our core principles. But what's unique in the security industry is that in the security industry, not everyone has taken the usual path of tech or engineering, et cetera. A lot of them were you know, hacking as a young age or solving puzzles or coming from a very diverse background. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have both formal education and security with the Cisco University, but also have a mentoring program and uh, a sponsorship. So we sponsor about 10,000 uh, uh, students to get security. Uh, and we also have informal ones. We have uh, internal phishing and things like that to just raise right. the security awareness to train within the, the Cisco employees. Exactly. Do you know off the top of your head how many employees there are at Cisco? About 75,000. Okay, so, and how many work would you say in cyber specifically? It's pretty broad because yeah. almost everybody has some aspect of it, mm -hmm. but the security business itself generally has about uh, 3,500 people. That's in huge. It. Wow. Um, with a talent shortage in cybersecurity right now, how is Cisco dealing with that and how are your customers dealing with it? So inside of Cisco, we have a lot of training going on. We have communities of interest that bring people together. And Cisco being uh, a, a tech company up and down management through uh, development and marketing and sales, uh, we, we take security very seriously. You have to have security kind of built into the company in almost everything you do. So uh, that's a huge part of Cisco. But from the customer perspective, a lot of our customers are just getting overwhelmed by the either the number of attacks or the complexity of the problem. Okay. Uh, you have shown that uh, we have a negative unemployment in yeah. uh, security. Right. Uh, this is huge. So automation, uh, machine learning, big data, these are, um, and, and just consolidating into a platform. These are trends in the security industry just to simplify all of that for our customers so that they can focus on incidents, on policy, on compliance, et cetera. On their business. On their business, basically. exactly. So um, speaking of people's businesses and uh, the C-suite, which we're speaking to today, we've seen the negative impact, specifically the financial impact that breaches have caused for many key enterprises. So what are your top suggestions for a CISO or a CEO when his or her company is um, hit with a breach, how are they impacted and what, what, what would you tell them? I think there's a couple things. First of all, um, you have to have a plan. Um, it's always amazing to me as, uh, because the technology rollouts in industry are so fast that people don't necessarily anticipate the consequences of those or have a plan in case something happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see that um, you know, the first thing is to just have a plan, a process, uh, compliance in place. But then the second thing that happens is that as you go through it, um, you don't want to kind of figure out security in the middle of an incident. Um, that's when panic sets in and whatnot. So a lot of our customers actually work with our partners. Uh, work with us directly as we automate the technology and make it simpler. That helps our partners fill the gap, uh, whether they're a managed uh, a security provider or uh, an MSSP and go all mm -hmm. the way up the stack. This helps our customers kind of focus on the security parts of their business and offload a lot of the complexity to others. So um, we're working on a cybersecurity almanac with Cisco this year. 
and that involves quite a bit of research from both cybersecurity ventures and Cisco. So how much is Cisco involved with researching new trends and thought leadership in cybersecurity? Well, first of all, we're very excited to participate in this. This is an, a, really uh, a void in the industry that I think uh, we're very excited to help fill. Uh, we have had annual security reports. So we interview about 3,000 or so CISOs uh, every year and then compile that. But these reports are, are fairly large and in-depth. Instead of just having very simple, like here's the top 100 stats uh, in, right. in, a, in a very... Digestible. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is what the industry really needs because numbers are always flying around. There is confusion in the marketplace. As we adopt new technologies, it's very hard to keep up. So it's all in one place, very concise format. We're very excited to help with that. So it is a very complex um, industry and you do see a lot of numbers flying around and it's hard to keep you know, your finger on the pulse of what is happening in cybersecurity, which is what we're trying to do at Cybersecurity Ventures is kind of speak to everybody about what they really need to know. Um, with market dynamics, consolidation, integration, how are your customers grappling with the complexity when it comes to the business side of it too? So what ends up happening, as I said before, security comes in waves. And, and what happens is whenever there's a new attack vector, a lot of companies spin up to address that. And then our customers consume that. And then they look back uh, over the last decade or so and they find themselves uh, with 50 or 60 or even more vendors and, and pieces of equipment in their enterprise to protect them. That complexity is also a security vulnerability. They, they find that they can't track and thread the event through all of these systems. So uh, what Cisco does is we have to have an open platform. We participate in a broad ecosystem, but try to integrate that together. And our customers now look around and say, I'm going to have three, five, 10. I'm going to take it down from these large numbers and just have a few trusted partners, ones that I know, one that I'm comfortable with, because that security relationship is really a trust relationship. We are protecting our customers. It's a responsibility that we take very, very seriously. And of course, our customers feel the same way. So you see this consolidation because of the complexity in the environment, but our customers still require best in, in class, best in breed. So um, how much does it make sense from a resource and a financial standpoint to outsource security, especially with SMBs being highly, highly targeted for cyber attacks? Yeah, I think, quite frankly, I wouldn't segment it into small, medium, large, et cetera. Everyone uh, feels that the threat, and, and we've seen breaches in both large companies as well as sure. small. I think what ends up happening is, if you feel that the threat because of your exposure or industry is larger than your capability to respond, then you should be working with partners. There are great folks out there who can, you know, very specific or very broad. Uh, they can help you in the planning phase, they can help you in the transformation phase, and they can actually help you also in the operational phase. So what are you specifically excited about this year for, for Cisco and security 2019? Anything that you're looking forward to? So because of this complexity, we've been integrating the portfolio and, and creating a platform for many years. But that complexity is opening up a new opportunity in the security industry that I'm personally very excited about. And that's, instead of just looking at the threat and breach and detection piece of it, going back and revisiting trust Trust has you know, been part of security since the very beginning and trying to establish trust software stacks and things like that. But then over the last decade, there's been so much focus on threat and detection. But because of the cloud, because of mobility and whatnot, trust is making a reemergence. You have to have trust boundaries. And so a lot of our customers are starting because of cloud and mobility to sit there and have a security posture that starts with deny all. 
instead of allow, they're denying all, and you have to earn that trust. And then once you earn it, that establishes your relationship with the enterprise and the applications. And so, for example, we see multi-factor authentication. And so last year, we acquired Duo, uh, the market leader in that space. But we've been going down this path for a long time, establishing user and trust to the network and network access, or user and application trust to, um, in the data center. Mm -hmm. And so we've been really expanding the trust side of the ledger as well as the threat and detection. And that's the one I'm, I'm personally very excited about. Well, that sounds really good and very interesting. Um, what about anything you're nervous about? Anything that scares you specifically or you know, keeps you up at night when it comes to cyber? I think the, the thing that concerns me the most is just the quality of the attacks that we've seen. It used to be that uh, when we do our threat research and we look at these things, um, this, uh, it, the code is fairly hacked together and, and it's built for speed, quick in, quick out, get your Bitcoin and move on. Recently, over the last couple of years, we've seen a huge increase in the quality of that code. Hmm. And so this is very robust code. It's actually modularized, so people get a footprint and then can expand from that footprint. The security market has segmented so that you have people who write the code, botnets that distribute the code, people with billing, help desks, et cetera. So the industry is evolving uh, in, in a way that uh, makes it much, much harder for the average CISO or the average company to deal with. Yeah, any advice regarding that, that before we go? I think the, the best advice is just to stick with um, world-class security professionals on the partner side, on the vendor side. Uh, we are all up to date on those latest threats. Yeah, we're all fighting it together. Exactly. Um, it's a team. This has been really interesting. G, I really appreciate you coming down today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.